Oh, I think he's referring to my equation. <laughs> Welcome to the Evidence and Reasons for the Christian Faith video channel. This is the main channel for uh, where I try to showcase my defense of the Christian faith by providing evidence and reasons to believe in the Christian faith. Uh, glory and honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The world, as we study the universe and life, it is evident to me that it has been intelligently designed. But when we look at all the pain and suffering in the world, it is obvious also that we are cursed, have fallen, and am, and we are in need of a Savior. So I wanted to give very sincere thanks to people that have been helping me. And since Schnoyle, God bless you, brother, uh, referred to the worm, this is the equation that I had been agonizing over, that I had developed uh, over the course of the last six weeks. I was studying Maxwell's equations and trying to connect it to rel special relativity, but also the problem of geomagnetism. We had the privilege of having Dr. Russell Humphreys, a physicist who's worked for General Electric, and then also he had a great career as a scientist in the secular world, but also he worked in creation science as well. And he has enlightened me on the problem of geomagnetism. And I believe that, I believe it's becoming evident that um, the world could not have been young. And, and I had to learn Maxwell's equations, relearn them actually from what I studied 30 years ago. And as I looked at them, I could understand Russell Humphrey's work better. And also the theorem that he uses, Cowling's theorem to argue that the earth has to be young. Uh, let me acknowledge Joseph Tim Merriman. I'd like to thank everyone that supported me through the saga of, as I was trying to construct this equation, uh, it, it was something I studied in graduate school, but uh, I'm sorry, it was something I studied in graduate school, but I've, I've had to uh, relearn it uh, as I'm trying to understand relativity uh, more in detail. Let me give an acknowledgement here to uh, my uh, supporters uh, who offered a lot of moral support as I developed this equation here. Last night I was stuck and I couldn't get this equation to resolve into this much simpler equation which I'll show. So I, 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 I had done a lot of uh, algebraic and calculus manipulations and Finally, it got, I was able to reduce that monstrosity, which Schnoyle refers to as the worm, into this simple equation here, which was the desired goal. I'll explain this a little bit later, but, uh, and its relevance to the Christian faith, this, this equation, its relevance to the Christian faith right here. But what had happened is I've been working on this on and off the last six weeks for 20, 30 hours. It's, I'm trying to relearn the physics and maybe someday I'll, I'll go for a PhD and I have to be a lot more versant in this stuff than I am. And I'll show you that I, I was stuck last night for like two hours and then I, I said, guys, I can't get this to work. I have to call it quits tonight. And Damian Martinez, came on this, uh, was in the side chat, and he said, uh, but you can trace it, Sal. Thank you for your hard work. God bless you. You'll be able to figure it out. He was encouraging me. I don't remember his exact words, but he said, but you can trace it. You can trace, because he saw how carefully I put together the, the equation. And greetings, Seamus. God bless you. 
And that encouraged me because I was despairing. I said, this is such a hard equation and 20 hours work. Could it be down the drain? I'm going to have to review everything and see where I made my mistake. And I was just kind of, there were like 10 minutes of silence sometimes, just long pauses because I was staring at this. I said, I can't make it work. I can't make it work. And then I found my error. I omitted the speed of light term right there. And there's another speed of light term right here. Actually, it's minus one over the square, one over speed of light squared. So I had to put that there and then it worked. That was the mistake. The equation, as I expanded it, I, I made a mistake here. This equals all this, which Noel calls the worm. This equals all this. And what I had omitted was, see that minus one over the speed of light squared, I had to put it in here. And I ended my stream last night. I think it was the fifth installment. And I just looked at this, I said, Lord, can I, I can't solve this, but I thank you for Damien. And within three minutes after I finished the stream or less than five minutes, something like that, I saw the error. I immediately started as fast as I could another stream and it said, I, I found the error. Let me see if I can fix it. I went on to uh, complete the derivation and I provided the link in the video description. So what does all this have to do? Let me share some scriptures. Let me share some scriptures. What does this all mean? It's relevance to the Christian faith. Uh, it says in the Bible, for the Lord, a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. For the Lord, uh, in his sight, a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. Now, it turns out that we have discovered uh, and this was even in the late 19th century through Lorentz, although he wasn't quite bold enough to, to, to follow through with its implications. Einstein was more forthright, but it's really Lorentz we owe a lot of this to. Uh, if we have hypothetically fraternal twins, a brother and sister, and uh, he's in the earth reference, what we call the earth, he's on earth and she's in the spaceship here. I know, let me see if I can make this a little bigger. She's in the spaceship. If she travels at, let's see, 99.999999999, 6% the speed of light, then a day for her will be like a thousand years. And a, and a thousand years for him, for the brother, will be like a day for her. So uh, this is kind of, I mean, one way to remember this is the scripture uh, for the Lord, it, uh, a, a thousand years is as a day and a day is as a thousand years. This could be hypothetically true if we had like say a pair of fraternal twins and one of them takes off and flies up to 99.999999996% the speed of light. A day for her will be like a thousand years for him and a thousand years for him will be like a day for her. We have had, we have since had experimental confirmation that this would likely be true because uh, we have GPS satellites that are moving very fast, not anywhere near the speed of light, but fast enough that we have to make corrections to their internal clocks. 
And uh, same with spaceships. And then there's also the effect of gravity. If you're low, your clocks move slow. If you're high or away from the gravitational field, uh, time flies by. So we found these two corrections of how, uh, how your aging process could be slowed down relative to other, um, other places in the universe. And so this is very interesting. The problem of distant starlight, the problem of distant starlight is um, a thorn in the creationist side because if the speed of light is a certain speed and you have objects that are billions of light years away, then the universe should be old. There are a variety of solutions young earth creationists have proposed. Some of them I think are terrible, uh, but they're still promoted like uh, Jason Lyle's asynchronous convention. Um, it's just wrong. And we have qualified physicists like Philip Dennis, who has been a very successful sec secular scientist, as well as the young earth creationist is very critical of Jason Lyle's ideas. Uh, in fact, uh, that's Dr. Philip Dennis. Dr. Philip Dennis has even given me a link to a video that can actually show that you can measure the speed, the one-way speed of light, uh, which Jason Lyle says you can't do. Uh, you can't. It's the femtosecond cameras uh, out there in Cal, I believe it's in California. Uh, a laser is fired. You could see the front of the laser beam as it's moving through a bottle of water. You can definitely see it moving at one speed one way. And hypothetically, you could see it move at another speed the other way. And as far as we know, uh, it's pretty much the same speed. Although I have been working on a laser interferometer that will try to see if we can actually measure one-way speeds of light. It would be in violation of Jason Lyle's ideas. I wrote Jason Lyle about this. He just brushed me off, didn't even give me the courtesy of a response. So I have, uh, you know, if he's gonna be that way, that's fine. Um, you know, uh, but the truth is the truth. His math doesn't work. It doesn't agree with the physics. Uh, he has no experiments to prove what he's saying. In fact, there are experiments that falsify it. And so this is, um, this is what I'm working on. If we can solve that, if we can show that the universe is young, um, this would point to uh, affirming a literal reading of the, of the third chapter of Luke, the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And by affirming that, that would be uh, evidence the Christian faith is true. That's why there's a lot to gain by this. There are other arguments that would suggest life is young. I've worked on the genetic entropy argument that was pioneered by Dr. John Sanford, a world famous genetic engineer. And uh, I thank God for him and greetings paleologos. So let me read the honor roll of people that have helped me. And I'm, I apologize if I forget some names in the process here. Uh, Damian Martinez, Janet Dutridge, Schnoyle, Mark O'Connell, Mr. Jetty89, Mats, Rebecca Davis. She came out of, uh, uh, she made a brief, uh, she came out of retirement briefly to appear in the side chat on one of the streams where I was doing the math. Um, ben Rex, Dr. Joel Duff, Paleologos, Emery Moyna, Cram Sward. Um, and I may have missed some people. I'd like to thank researchers Russell Humphreys, Philip Dennis, and Jonathan Bartlett. And I provided some links to Jonathan Bartlett's work on uh, calculus and Russell Humphreys' work on geomagnetism. Uh, so Russell Humphreys helped me uh, with Maxwell's equations, at least as they apply to Cowling's theorem, which shows the Earth is likely young. If you're willing to connect the dots, Cowling himself didn't argue the world is young. But the consequence of this theorem suggests at least the Earth is young, maybe the solar system too. Uh, 
and then Jonathan Bartlett gave a great talk on uh, Leibniz notation for uh, de uh, derivatives, and that was important for the derivations I was making. Now I have to give my dishonor roll of uh, people I've banned from this channel, uh, both, uh, you know, not just evolutionists, but also some creationists, um, <laughs> the Kent Hovind supporters who come here and defend him, they're usually gone. Uh, uh, that would include Ramat and Standing for True, SFT. Um, he's, they're gone. Uh, th there have been some others. On the evolutionist side, I'm just tired of dealing with brain-damaged trolls. And so I have uh, dispensed with Miles Davis, and I dispensed with someone today. His name is No, he goes by the handle none of your business. I wrote him a nasty note and said, uh, um, you're worthless to me. <laughs> and uh, uh, you're banished, you troll. Or I said something like that. So uh, that's, I'm collecting a dishonor roll because I think I banned between my Reddit uh, what do they call it? Subs, subreddits, and then YouTube, probably two, three hundred people. And I'm going to be so proud as that list grows. I call the dishonor roll because that kind of makes my day. Um, uh, Janet Dutridge says, I did come by long enough to give a thumbs up before I laid down when you were streaming. I'm very happy for your success and praise God for all he's doing through you in spite of the opposition. Thank you. Never stop. Don't give up. You're doing a fantastic job. Thank you so much. Oh, and Paleologo says, I've got a chem exam and I'm still struggling on my thermodynamics. Laugh out loud. Oh, we ought to have a homework session sometime. We could learn this together, thermodynamics and chemistry. Uh, are you doing the Gibbs free energy there? Let me see. Delta G equals H minus T D S. Yeah, T delta S. There you go. So while Janet is here, let me say a prayer for all of the people that have supported this channel um, as far as giving me moral support uh, and then also financial. Very much thank you for the financial support, guys. Um, and, but I, I, I want to thank for the moral support, especially the last, uh, the last few weeks as I was relearning and preparing to go back to school. So let's pray for Janet. Let's pray for Paleologos exam. I'm pleased to announce that Emery Moyna is doing extremely well in graduate school. I expect him to be very close to the top of his class in biology. And that's great news. Uh, because they say creationists can't do science, much less a young earth creationist like Emory, and he's top of his class. So uh, there are many graduate, there are several graduate students who have passed by this channel, including one who's a very excellent PhD student and published already in prestigious journals. Um, I'm proud of, I'm proud of the crew that we have here. This channel isn't, doesn't have huge numbers but it has quality. So let me offer a prayer. Um, let me read a scripture. Oh, and I, I did want to, there was, there was, there are two scriptures I had in mind today. One of them was uh, about that woman who'd lost a, um, a coin and she lit a candle and she looked and when she found the coin, she, uh, she was rejoicing and called all her friends not call them, <laughs> they didn't have a telephone, but, but she got a hold of all her friends and they celebrated. So uh, that was me following, um, following how, what happened last night when I was able to find that lost term, the uh, minus one over C squared. I was so happy. Uh, yes, ever get an MRI? I did. 
Thank you, Young Earth Creations, Raymond Damadian. Um, you know, they keep saying we want more scientists. It's terrible that they're rejecting creationists and I, old Earth, young Earth, uh, you know, ID proponents, when we could use more scientists. And what's the grounds? Because they're Christian? Because they believe God's a creator? That they believe in miracles? That's terrible. I mean, um, why does that disqualify someone from doing science? So anyway, um, let me get off my soapbox and honor the Lord with a scripture as I offer a prayer. Dear Lord, you have said, first of all, then I urge supplications, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good and it is pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior. And to that end, Lord, I do lift up all the leaders of the world, as crooked as they are. Uh, you've used crooked leaders to do your will. And so um, we ask, for mercy so that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, dignified and in service of you. Lord, it says in your word that uh, one sinner can destroy much good. And that's what's happening with Vladimir Putin. He's destroying his country. He's destroying Ukraine. People around the world are starving because he's blockaded um, the food coming out of Ukraine and we may be on the brink of nuclear war uh, because of the insanity and the evil heart of one man. But you've told us to pray for him and for all leaders. And I, I pray, Lord, because you've commanded it, not, as, not because I particularly care for Putin, but because you've commanded it, Lord, may you stop him and may he stop himself um, from doing these evil deeds, and may there be peace in the land uh, around the world. And we know, Lord, that there will, there will come a time when the world will end and uh, th there will be much evil around the earth. But in the meantime, you have told us to offer this prayer, and so we do. I lift up Janet Dutridge. Uh, you've said true religion is to care for widows and orphans. And so we uh, Christians here pray for her, for her welfare, as she had lost her husband some years ago, and now she is a widow and she's disabled. Please provide for her needs. And we lift up the graduate students um, and the scientists watching these cha this channel who are, who are um, Christians, who profess your name, I thank you for Emory's success in graduate school. And now I lift up Peter Paleologos as he's studying for a chemistry exam, help him with the thermodynamics section. And I know thermodynamics is confusing and unfortunately it's not even taught well. Uh, even scientists don't quite understand it all. So please help him to uh, balance all those equations that he'll be tested on, give him the skill and wisdom, help him to excel. Lord, help your people to begin to dominate science. Um, help us to find ways to matriculate through academia and then to get into industry, Lord, and that we can honor and glorify you by our science. And Lord, not just science, but whatever station in life that you've called each and every one of us. For my mother, for the last years of her life, all she could do mostly was just sit in her recliner and pray. And I thank you for her example that even with her last breath, she was seeking after you. And so all of us have a role in God's kingdom. Help us to do excellently what you have appointed us to do, what you've called us to do, what you have anointed each of us to do and to do well. And please help all the creation scientists to find the answer, to reveal, help uncover the 
the things that you've hidden for us to discover. For it says in Proverbs 25, 2, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's the glory of kings to search out a matter. So Lord, you've concealed things for us to discover, to give, to bring honor and glory to you. And so we look to you to help us to accomplish this, especially for the creationist scientists. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So um, let me check something modern. I may be, I have been contacted by James Coons, the owner of Modern Day Debate, and he has uh, suggested I debate on November 10th with an evolutionary biologist. We'll see if that transpires. But let me uh, just highlight uh, the debate I had with, against Aaron Ra and Dr. Chris, October 5th. Let me see the numbers. Let's look at the numbers here. It's up to 42,000 views, 42,000 views. That debate there, that's us. Aaron Ra, Aaron Ra, Dr. Chris Thompson, Sal, and Cindy Lincoln, 42,000 views. So just wanted to let you know about that. So I don't have much else to, to say. Um, this, it's just great to read scriptures, to offer prayers. I have an academic channel, and so I, you know, I really don't do much as far as anything that might um, stoke the fires of YouTube drama. I, I'm, I'm glad to see people that are uh, bailing out. And Paleo Logo says, uh, "What about the argument that spiral galaxies should wind up if old?" Uh, I think it is flawed, but I don't know much about astronomy. Well, it is a problem. Uh, it's a good argument, uh, be, uh, but there have been counter arguments. I wouldn't say it's. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a terrible argument. It's the young Earth creationists don't have a lot of killer arguments yet. We have good ones. The creationists, on the whole, both old and young, have very good arguments against the origin of life. They have would have great arguments against eukaryotic evolution. They have a, a, a strong case for genetic deterioration for in humans, what we call genetic entropy. We have a strong case for um, chemical dates indicating youth. We have the geomagnetic field. We have the faint young sun paradox. Things that are far away, objects that are galaxies that we cannot observe with space probes, uh, as in you know, circling the, the galaxy. Uh, all of those would be difficult. So um, it, we're, we're getting there. I, I think the genetic entropy argument is suggesting life is young uh, for at least human life. And uh, there's much to discover. And I'm trusting because God said it's the glory of kings to search it out. Um, I don't think it's just searching it out, but uh, to discover it. And if it's not explicitly in the Bible, that's certainly how history has been playing out. We are making more archaeological discoveries uh, over time. The science is starting to favor us. It's a glorious time to be a Christian and to defend the faith. At the same time, the, the emptiness of atheism, what it has to offer, it, uh, which is pretty much nothing, uh, it, it's echoed um, by 1 Corinthians 15, if the dead are not raised, if Christ is not raised, then your faith is in vain. Let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. And that's about all that atheism offers as, you know, as, as far as its logical conclusion. I don't have to say that because their own poets or prophets have pretty much said that themselves. There's no good, no evil, no meaning if there's no God. There's no right or wrong. And uh, so it, it's a great time to be a Christian. On the other hand, God does make it very easy if people don't want to seek him. 
he will hide uh, the evidence and uh, it'll be very easy for people to just close their eyes to it if they're not willing to look. So um, uh, that's what I have to say. So let me just, uh, I'm gonna cover this. Oh yeah, so some news. Um, I'm focusing on the academic channel because I really just want to get better at the science. I, I'm really not into the internet drama. Uh, it's not what I want to live for. It, it does me very little good. But I keep the YouTube channel just as a as a chance to fellowship with quality people. Um, and and to that extent, as I noticed that the academic channel I have has has drawn more quality people. There's not been a lot of bickering and stuff. I don't like getting into theological debates. People know my theological position. I, I'm evangelical Christian with a Reformed background, although I don't self-identify anymore as a Calvinist. Um, but that being said, um, let me, I have my other computer screen here. Uh, I, th there is a new creationist museum opening up and I've been invited to be a part of it and to build exhibits and also do television shows on their network. Um, television shows for their network and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I have a lot of work uh, to prepare for all this and it just seems overwhelming. Um, and uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's just, you know, when you see me on my late night streams, I look totally worn out because I am, <laughs> but I was having fun. So, uh, so you, I'll be more, I'll give more specifics about my involvement in the museum as it, as it transpires. Um, the, 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 the publishing has been good. Uh, there's opportunities and there's been accomplishments uh, in that front. Um, but I don't want to really talk about it in detail um, for a variety of reasons right now. But uh, God willing, that will be coming. So let us, uh, let me, in closing, okay, so, oh, little bit of news. Look, I'm going to put this in the comment section, www.evidence and reasons.org. So there is a website now that I and a colleague are building. It's evidenceandreasons.org. It's hopefully, uh, it's, it just has a little bit of content, very tiny amounts, uh, but it, it has it, it has kind of um, all levels of Christian defense of the Christian faith from very technical to very, you know, hopefully accessible to all people. We have lots of archaeology stuff and Christian testimonies, and then eventually creation science. There's not a lot of creation science because that's such a hard topic. So for me, evidence and reasons for the Christian faith is in a few categories. In uh, there, There's some main categories. One is Christian testimony, what Jesus has done in people's lives, the changed lives, answered prayer, the miracles. That's about 15% of, you know, uh, what I, I'd say what I'd like focusing on. Next would be creation science. That'd be about 65% because that's strong evidence of a creator. And to the extent that it's showing that um, uh, our genomes are declining, it is confirming Jesus' words that this world is passing away. Definitely for humanity, it is passing away and um, uh, it would indicate that you know human life hasn't been here long. So Jesus, uh, uh, yeah, genus, Jesus genealogy, creation science, uh, the young earth, both the old and young earth creation science is great stuff, uh, even though I'm a young earth creationist. Young earth creationism uh, involves a lot with Noah's flood, and that's exciting. So... And then the next apologetics thing would be archaeology, a lot of archaeological discoveries, um, encouraging, and and I think um, 
it's very hard to run away that from the fact there is a creator, that Jesus was a real person. Many of the characters in the Bible were real people. Uh, it leads me to the conclusion this was a reliable account of events. Therefore, Jesus is who he said he was. Then we have a little bit of what I call presuppositional apologetics, like 5%, not much. Um, very simple thing is that if one is an atheist, um, the, the rational conclusion is, as it says in 1 Corinthians uh, 15, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. It's basically, uh, it does, it's not a very hopeful worldview. It's very nihilistic. And uh, it, it's, 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 it's hard to form va a value system of what's right and wrong beyond each of our own whims. Um, there should be eventually, and we're not gotten around to it yet, is to explore other religions and various philosophies. But here is the man of the hour. I'm so glad you dropped in, Damien. I was in such despair last night in my in the fifth installment, of, I think it was the fifth, of my uh, derivation of um, relativity from Maxwell's equations or the confirmation of it. And um, I couldn't get things to work. And I called it a night and you, Damien, had come on and said, well, at least you're able to trace your steps. And I said, yeah, that's right. I've been very careful in putting this document together and I should be able to trace it. And I, I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do because I have already spent 20 hours, maybe 30 hours over the last six weeks putting this together. And then I try to get to the end and it's falling apart. And I was feeling I was close, but there were still problems. And I said, Lord, I gave it to you. I shut the stream down because I said I have to call it a night. And I gave it one last look after I shut the stream down and I saw my error. I forgot to include the speed of light term. Actually, it's min minus one over the, over the speed of light squared. I omitted it. Uh, within about five minutes, I restarted the stream and uh, caught the error and then was able to complete the derivation. So God bless you, Damien. Um, let me give you um, thank you for your moral support. So a lot of people don't, will not know, um, uh, will not even know what the equations or what the derivations are. They're just there offering moral support. And I can't thank you guys enough for your willingness to do that. So um, I, I was looking up, oh yeah. So I, I just wanted to say uh, a heart a heartfelt thank you for for, for get, offering your moral support. Um, you know, uh, being a creationist scientist is um, there is there's a lot of tedium, and there is a there's a lot of boredom, tedium, boredom, and uh, a lot of tedium. Oops, sorry, and 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 loneliness and loneliness. So. Let me, I'm going to say, I'm typing this, heart felt, thank you for your moral support. Amy and Martinez, so you encouraged me to persevere when I was about to throw in the towel. So I talked about my work for the museum and the new Creationist Museum and, and uh, the television network I'll be appearing on and the evidencereasons.org website, which we're building out. It's gonna be a lot better than the YouTube channel because uh, we will link to what we've curated, curated to be what we think are the best arguments in favor of Christianity in its defense it won't be limited to what I just, you know, what I talk about on my channel, which is great because, you know, one human being can only do so much and it wouldn't be great to hear from all the great minds throughout history and in the present day. 
So we have we have to uh, we have to um, we had we had to curate it and just make it available in an organized fashion because there's really a lot of junk out there too, guys. Okay, in defense of the Christian faith, and and so we've had a team of curators that have met about 200 times over the last two and a half years. How that happened was we were just trying to get together to encourage each other. And we figured out how to share videos in a, in a private meeting. And um, what would happen is one guy would say, well, I watched this. Or one lady would say, I, I watched this. This is really encouraging. We'd share it. We'd decide if it's good. And so we have kind of a collection that we think is really uh, encouraging to us. And it wasn't that we were getting together to figure out how to debate and argue. We were finding we needed a little reassurance that God was there. And so this process of finding what really helped us um, started to be the core of our collection. Now, sadly, we've forgotten a lot of the links that we had put together, and, and we might have to recapitulate that. But um, that'll be on the evidenceandreasons.org website. If you want to hang out with me in my nerd dumpster fire sessions, you're welcome to. Um, it's not at all entertaining. It's, I wouldn't say it's inspiring. In fact, the opposite. You'll get to get a taste of the TDM and the confusion and the difficulty of being a student of science and a, a professional creationist researcher. It is, it is not fun. It is a cross to bear, but glory and honor to our Lord and Savior who who gives us uh, a reason to search this out. So just like last night, there's a lot of times I spend a couple hours just being stuck and not knowing where to go. Um, um, uh, so uh, that's what's going on. But since we are talking about last night, let me just cover what, what all this is about that I was working on tying Maxwell's equations of electrodynamics to special relativity. First, it's really good for, there are not enough creationist physicists. I've been kind, people have known me as a biologist and I'm really not, not at heart. I, I'm a fake biologist, okay? I published, I have maybe five biological, five or six publications peer reviewed in biology. God willing, there'll be more, but it's not really, um, it's not really where my heart is. Take, oh, God bless you, Cheryl. It's not really where my heart is. It's in engineering and physics. And so um, uh, studying Maxwell's equations, we can find young evidence of young earth creationism in geo, you know, uh, the geomagnetic field, which involves understanding Cowling's theorem, which involves understanding Maxwell's equation and some stuff in fluid dynamics. It's not trivial stuff. The next is the distant starlight problem. How can light from stars far away arrive to us in less than 10,000 years? So um, trying to solve the speed of light problem is, also involves understanding the nature of light. And a lot of, for a long time, it was like sacrosanct to criticize. I mean, it was like you did not criticize Einstein. Um, he was beyond criticism, but it slowly crept in because of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics, if we accept quantum mechanics that says time has to be, there has to be an absolute time, it would mean Einstein's relativity is not quite right. And that's a crack in the door for the speed of light possibly being variable. If we have variable speed of light, my hope is to find mechanisms for variable speed of light. I think it is changes in the density, um, you know, creating more, uh, less dense, zero point energy speed of light is very, could be very fast. I, I thought of some experiments to, to pursue this idea, but before getting there, I need to be good at photonics. We have a graduate student who's studying photonics. And so I'm starting to learn kind of the, uh, the math side of one part of photonics, which is electromagnetic theory. We also have, uh, we can begin to understand how quote unquote time flows differently depending on your velocity. And, and, and to really understand all the mechanics of relativity and therefore being in the position to criticize it was very important. So I have to learn it. 
And from the ground up, both electromagnetism, classical electromagnetism and relativity, I'm learning it, but I'm already seeing cracks. I'm gonna be in touch with a top flight uh, researcher who is, who, uh, is a PhD and his specialty was mathematical physics with a specialty in general relativity. He, he was a consultant for uh, NASA, the National Air Aeronautics and Space Administration. So, I mean, he's good, but he's also a young earth creationist. His name is Philip Dennis. And I promised, I, like I promised Russell Humphreys, uh, you know, I'm gonna, let me spend some time with Maxwell's equations of electrodynamics. And I'm gonna start doing relativity because I've found some flaws in the way it's being taught and then maybe misunderstood. I think there is an absolute reference frame and I'm seeing it as I do these derivations and that's why I'm excited about this. This is where my heart is. Uh, I feel that's where I've been, uh, God is calling me to work, not as an evangelist or a, you know, someone who is on the debate stage all the time, that's not gonna be me. Or, uh, you know, I will have, like I said, I have television programs and a few museum exhibits and then publications, but my, I feel my main calling now is to do creationist research. Um, prior to this, my main calling was to take care of my dear mother who went home to be with the Lord um, in 2021. And now that I'm more mobile, I, I'm free to do uh, a little, you know, um, do creation science full time and then spending some time educating others. So this, I was working on this as a preparing an educational document to teach um, just how difficult electromagnetic theory is and special relativity. Um, this is a lot harder to do than, um, this is a lot harder to do than biology. Biology is so easy by comparison. Uh, okay, so Matt's, Matt's, great to see you. Does modern ID root from, uh, I think it's Mar Marcel, not Marco, Marcel Schutzenberger, combining mathematicians and a doctor of medicine. That's kind of interesting. Uh, well, okay, it depends on which historian you ask. Bill Dembski says the ID movement began with Denton and Bradley Thaxton and Olson's book, The Mystery of Life's Origin, and then um, Denton's, I think, 1985 book, Evolution of Theory and Crisis, uh, Mystery of Life's Origin, I think was 1984 or so. I may be off by a couple of years, but that's about the time frame. But definitely uh, the Y Star Conference and uh, Schutzenberger uh, were the beginnings of the criticism, and then Maury Eden of MIT. Um, so, uh, but we can even go all the way back to Paley's Watch if you want. I mean, Paley's Natural natural theology. So, you know, uh, to say who is the most influential, I, I don't want to get into those arguments. I do want to recognize and say it, it definitely, it's hard to imagine without this person. Um, ID goes all the way back to even the time of Cicero in the Romans. So, uh, because a lot of that is still, I mean, I think Cicero even invokes stuff with something like a clock or a sundial. Uh, and then you can even hear it in the writings of a deist like Thomas Jefferson. Uh, so, so, you know, even guess who? Charles Darwin. He said, intelligent design bothers me. I'm just like, yeah, it does. It should bother you. So, uh, you know, the, it's, it's, it's been around and um, I think it's intuitive that we think something has been made for a purpose. The Christian doctrine says yes, but we live in a world that's intelligently designed, but also cursed. So I'm gr grateful for all the people that are uh, visiting here. Let me just kind of now just blast through this. And if you want all the gory details, it's on the academic channel. I put a link, it's the Evidence Reasons Academy. And um, if you want to see nerd dumpster fires where I just, uh, uh, you'll actually see me basically doing my homework, so to speak. It's not pleasant. It's tedious. It's across the bear. Uh, but it, for those who are curious, 
I put it out there because um, uh, it helps me to share and people have off. I'm really glad I did now, especially after last night when people have come by and offered moral support, I'll say, I'm not doing so well on this right now. And Damien will come in and just give me a word of encouragement. So <clears throat> if we're gonna have dumpster fires on the internet, those are the sort of dumpster fires I think are worth being a part of, at least for me, rather than the usual internet drama. So again, why don't I just see if I can get through this in about 10 minutes and then we'll shut this stream down. I know I don't do a lot of streams anymore on this channel. Uh, I just don't have the time and energy because as I said, I have to get ready for, um, uh, to be start doing television shows probably in January and then get my muse museum exhibits ready. And it's gonna be a lot of hard work guys. So, um, and then I have all these scientific papers I'm working on, um, working one on Avita working one on frame shift mutations, working on another one on thermodynamics, uh, a publication on uh, genetic entropy 2.0, and, uh, and then this educational paper on, you're actually seeing it transpire as I develop it on Maxwell's equations and thermodynamics, I mean, Maxwell's equations and special relativity. So there is a ton going on um, but anyway, let me just try to blast through this. And so we're talking about the twin paradox. We showed scientifically the, the verse that says a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day that has been shown to be scientifically accurate. And, um, um, it can be achieved if we ever have very fast spacecraft. So uh, it all began, and let me see if I could find this. Uh, give me one moment. I'm going to look for Maxwell's equations. It all starts from equations of electrodynamics. And let me see if I could find. Yeah, this is a beautiful, this is a beautiful statement of it right here. you'll indulge me. It starts from Maxwell's equations of electrodynamics right there. So we would not have, oh my goodness, look who's here. <laughs> I scared her off. Rebecca's come on, coming out of YouTube retirement just to do a drive-by on my channel. You made my day. So, um, we would not have, if we didn't have the modern understanding of this math, we would not have, we wouldn't have the command of electricity. There'd be no cell phones, no internet, no YouTube, no computers, no light bulbs, no cars that use spark plugs, no generators, no motors, therefore no airplanes, no modern airplanes anyway. Um, I mean, just imagine what life is like without electricity. Let's just try to go through a, a, a day without electricity in your house. Um, and you'll get, you know, even now when people go camping, they'll, they'll bring their cell phones that have GPS to help them out or whatever. So, uh, the you know, the irony is without our modern understanding and acceptance of these equations, there'd be no modern life. Now, professionally, most electrical engineers will not be able to quote these equations. Uh, um, they kind of get kind of a, um, a diluted version of it to do the professional work. And when I went through electrical engineering, I didn't really have to rely on a lot of this. But the, the, the magic of these equations is that it unifies electricity, magnetism, and optics, which is light. Electricity, magnetism, and light. The nature of light involves electricity and magnetism. And light, a light wave is the uh, electric field varying along with a, simultaneously with a magnetic field with it is beautiful. And so um, we started with this, we predicted light waves with Maxwell's equations. And I'm gonna give, let me see, 
let me let me look for this. This is the 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 solution to Maxwell's equations that describe light. So within all of this, hang on, let me get my buttons in order. I'm sorry. Apologies here, guys. I'm... There it is. Within all of these equations, there is one particular solution. These are four first order partial differential equations. One of the solutions is a second order partial differential equation. I know that seems strange, but, and then the particular solution of that second order partial differential equation is a sine wave, which is a light wave, classical light wave. And so this is the electromagnetic wave equation right there. And I've been working to understand what the symbols mean. So now I, I, I know what the symbols mean. I mean, it took a long time for me to even understand what the symbols mean. And here's the proof. Don't need to go through it. Um, but I stated it in my paper. And I'm going to try to keep this to a minimum because uh, I don't want to torture everyone. Uh, if you want to be tortured, you can go to my academic channel. But anyway, so we start off with this electromagnetic equation right there. Start off with the electromagnetic equation. And we have, there are ways to frame it with these partial derivatives, also with the Laplacian and this term, this minus one over C squared times the second order partial derivative with respect to time, or we could just use the box. I like that. How about that little equation? Isn't that cute? We call that a, the box is called a DL inversion. See, that's a nice, simple equation that looks simple enough. Okay, so now if we kind of expand this equation here, uh, and its meaning, and then we relate it to this girl traveling in space relative to the guy. So the guy's equation looks like this. He's on the earth and the girl's equation looks like that. And, and the only difference is it has a subscript E here for the guy and it has a E for earth. And then the girl just has a subscript S for spaceship. Oh no, uh, can someone take care of that? <laughs> Did I say something that triggered that bot? Uh, mods, can you uh, extinguish that invasion there? I mentioned the word girl, and, and suddenly we start getting, it, it, it heard me. So, um, so this little equation that says this little box here can be expanded to be this, and then we can relate it through something called the Lorentz transformation. Uh, there's Lorentz here beside Einstein. Einstein revered him. And so we have these little four equations, and one of them talks about time being changed, the flow of time being changed in the spacecraft effectively. And so the key equation is here where the time in the spacecraft is slower than the time on Earth, and then you also have the, uh, the, uh, the position on Earth there so that's what the symbols kind of mean. And there's, I do all these partial derivatives and it's nasty. And then so we expand. We expand, uh, you know, what we're trying to show is that light, the way light behaves on Earth is the same way in the spacecraft. And the speed of light on Earth. So you see the C squared here. It's the same as the speed of light inside the spacecraft. But the consequence of that is if this is the case, then time, or really the clocks, have to slow down in the spacecraft. And so what all this derivation is affirming that, 
And so uh, let me see. I, I, I had I tried to make a failed attempt at humor here, where I was making the derivatives with smiley faces. And Schnoyle said, that looks really creepy. <laughs> I was trying to make a point how we could do substitutions. Anyway, uh, I, was, I, was, I was having a, a, an attempt at humor. And this is foretelling how this, what Schnoyle called a worm, that when we start to insert this here, it's going to grow. And I said, that gave me an idea, Schnoyle. Why don't I do just that? So... What you see here with the smiley faces, you'll see that I grow the equation. And that's one round, 16. And that's the second round, another 16. And I colorize the coordinate system. And then the, uh, where's the Z round? Okay, that's the, okay, let's see. That's the third round of 16, and then finally the fourth round of 16 terms. And then finally we get to the mother of the equations, the mother of all what I call the, the main equation. So, oh, and I'm almost done, guys. Agony is almost over. See, I can't even fit it all. So this equation, remember it was just a box with a psi. When you expand it, it starts to expand in, into these 64 terms. And I made a mistake that Ray helped me figure out. I've, I've, and I don't know why it's missing here. There was, there's supposed to be, let me paste that in there. There's supposed to be a one minus c squared. One minus, where that's minus one over the speed of light squared. So that term, I when I was doing all this expansion, I forgot to take account of that. And I put it, and, and that's when I despaired because I couldn't make sense of this equation. When I caught the mistake, after I ended the stream and Damien had given me the encouragement, he said, you know, thank, thank you, Sal, for your hard work. Uh, at least you can trace the steps. I went, after I shut down the stream, I caught that little mistake. That's all it took. This here. And what the consequence of that is, is I had to put that term in four places here. One minus one over the speed of light squared and so that one little mistake created four other mistakes. But when I corrected it, then I was able to carry out the derivations and simplifications. So uh, I was able to just, so we, I, I was able to reduce the equation. And this took me about an hour and it got nicer and nicer and it's not as nasty and then i use some theorems and calculus like the schwartz criterion and i was able to reduce it and ta-da a little more reduction ta-da i finally got this which is what i wanted to show that confirms that uh implicitly the speed of the faster you go, the slower your clock runs. Um, therefore, hypothetically, a day can be a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. And that confirmed the relationship of, I, of Maxwell's equations of electrodynamics with special relativity. But as I said, I'm learning this not to support and claim that special relativity is error free. I would say it's mostly right, but there are preferred frames. And going through this der derivation shows that um, there probably is an ether after all. They claim that they have falsified it. There have been experiments that suggest it. 
And then also I will even suggest some thought experiments, but I had to go through this derivation to kind of see it for myself. So if there's an ether, that means there are places in the universe where the ether can be, its properties might be different. Therefore, the speed of light could be variable, which could be very exciting. And um, I'm, not the, I'm not original in this thought. Um, I'll cover it in my academic channel that there have been uh, Michelson-Morley experiments that use refractive media, and they, got, they confirmed the ether. So the Michelson-Morley experiments that were done in a vacuum couldn't detect it. The ones done with refractive media could. And I'm excited about that. We have now both a theoretical basis as I analyze this, and then more importantly, an experimental basis to suggest an ether. And if there's an ether, there could be uh, changes in the properties of the ether uh, because we've seen that in some of these experiments. Therefore, we could have variable speed of light. If we have variable speed of light that opens uh, the door a little, the crack a little wider to solve the distant starlight problem. And that's why I have been suffering through these equations and I will continue to try to put this together. It's one small step uh, for a very long um, journey. And I'm try trying to do what I can to contribute. I'm glad I've been able to contribute to creationism with my work in biology, but I feel especially like for the origin of life, it's gonna be like beating a dead horse because it's just so easy to blow away abiogenesis at this point. We don't need any more people contributing. Um, we can help, you know, we can. We need people to contribute maybe to, to the cellular evolution of various forms like eukaryotes. Um, and we're, I, I just expect we're gonna move forward there. Stuff with radiometric dating is another frontier. Um, but we also have, you know, uh, you know, anything with Noah's flood, that's another frontier, but then there's this frontier of physics. And so I feel called to go there because there's just not enough people. There are not very many in biology. There are more now, uh, but we still have just a, uh, a need for people to do the physics work. And, and, and you know, uh, before I go home to be with the Lord, I'm going to try to make my contribution if as the lord provides it's in his will so matt says maxwell and his elegant equation draw pots like moth to a flame <laughs> okay matt um everybody thank you for your moral support um thank you so much for uh the financial support um thank you for your prayers i will continue to need your prayers um as I move forward. And I would like to uh, acknowledge Matt's. He took me out to dinner when I was there in Dallas. And I don't know when I'll be back in Dallas again, um, but maybe we can all hang out if that's the case. And so now I'm just gonna shut down the stream. Um, I probably will visit this channel maybe, I'll try to be like here at least once a week, do one, one show a week, uh, try to give something uplifting uh, and encouraging to people. Most of my appearances will be uh, invested in the dumpster fires at the uh, Evidence Reasons Academy. We'll also be doing, we might be reading peer reviewed works. Um, so if you wanna be tortured like a real creation scientist, you're gonna get a taste of it right there. You're gonna get, it'll be my reality TV show of life as a creationist scientist. It's not anything that would be uh, that compelling, but that's the life of a creationist scientist. So let me um, glory and honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, let's finish out with some rock, uh, with some rock money off. God bless you all. Have a good night. <laughs>